Hey guys, today we're going to make one of my favorite dishes, Guinness braised short ribs, and we'll throw in some accompanying sides while we're at it. The first thing you want to do is remove any fat or silver skin from the top of the cut. Silver skin will not break down in the braise, and nobody likes eating a big chunk of fat, so let's trim that off. Next, you're going to want to generously season the meat with salt and pepper. Once that's done, you're going to want to let it chill in the fridge for a couple hours. Once the meat has had time to absorb the seasonings, you can go ahead and take it out and let it rest at room temperature for at least 30 minutes. While that's happening, we can go ahead and prepare our vegetables for the braising liquid. You're going to need a couple of decent sized carrots, a couple of medium sized onions, and a couple stalks of celery. I like to do a fairly large chop here, so they're easier to remove, but also so the carrots don't end up as a mushy mess in the pot when we're done. Nobody likes a mushy mess. Cut a couple heads of garlic in half, toss the tops, and save the thick ends for our braising liquid. You're going to want to heat a couple tablespoons of oil over medium-high heat in a Dutch oven. It's important to use a Dutch oven or something similar to a thick-walled vessel with a tight-fitting lid. It is essential to maintain consistent heat through the braising process, so I like to use my Dutch oven. Once the oil's hot, you can start searing the short ribs on all sides. You can skip the bone side. Once they're nice and brown, you can go ahead and remove them to a plate while we saute our veggies. Start with the onions and go ahead and cook those until they just start to turn translucent. Then you can add the rest of your vegetables and saute those for a few more minutes. Go ahead and add in a couple tablespoons of tomato paste. That don't skip this part because it adds depth to the final sauce that you're not going to want to miss. A tablespoon or two of soy sauce will bring out some umami flavor. Pour in a couple cups of unsalted chicken stock. You want to make sure it's unsalted because we already salted our short ribs and as the sauce reduces, it's going to be more and more intense. You can add more salt at the end if you think it's necessary. Next comes the namesake of our recipe and you're going to want to use the whole pint here. You don't have to use Guinness here if you prefer some other deep flavored beer instead, but I prefer the richness of a stout. Bring all that up to a simmer and nestle the short ribs into the stock so that they're poking out of the top of the braising liquid. You don't want to fully submerge them here because that wouldn't be braising, that would be stewing. Preheat your oven to 275 degrees Fahrenheit, add in some fresh thyme and parsley, cover and cook for 3-4 to four hours. After about an hour it looked like this. Just close the lid and cook it for another few hours. You can make sure your short ribs are done by poking them with a knife, and if they're tender throughout, then they're ready for the next step. Take your dish out of the oven and carefully remove the short ribs to a plate. I use tongs here, but you want to try and keep the bone attached, so you should probably use a fork and a spoon and gently lift them out. I like to scoop out some of the bigger chunks of veggies into my strainer before lifting the pot and pouring the rest through. Use the back of your spoon to push out as much of the sauce through the strainer as you can, and then discard the cooked veggies. Did you think we were done? Uh-uh. What you're left with is the braising liquid with a layer of fat on top. Cover it and put it in the fridge overnight. The fat layer should now be solidified and can be easily removed from the rest of the liquid. I like to run the braising liquid through a strainer one last time just to make sure that I got any large bits out before I start reducing it. This is going to take a couple hours. You're going to want to reduce this liquid by a significant amount until it's silky smooth and coats the back of the spoon. This will give us a good opportunity to prepare our side dishes and garnishes for the final assembly. I like to get the fried shallots done first because they can be set aside for later without having to worry about them getting soft.
For the glazed pearl onions, I like to place them in a bowl with some hot water. Just tap hot is fine. Let them sit for about 30 minutes. Doing this makes them easier to peel and also starts the softening process. When you're ready, put the onions in a small skillet and add enough water to cover about halfway up the onions. Add a half a stick of butter, a tablespoon of sugar, and cook until the liquid all is all evaporated away. When they start to turn brown, keep them moving in the pan for even glazing, and then remove them to a bowl. Mmm, they look delicious. Next up, we're going to make some simple sautéed carrots to accompany our short ribs. You can peel them if you like, I just like the way they look from the farmer's market in this variety, so I didn't. I like to cut them in half lengthwise like this, just so they have a flat surface to sit in the pan while I cook them. Then I just heated up a pan, put in some butter, put in my carrots, put in some salt and pepper, and let them cook. When they start to look like this, they're pretty much done. Just check them for doneness with a knife, and when they are done, pull them out. And finally, we're just gonna make grits. Just make them according to the package instructions, and then add some cheese at the end, and stir it up, and turn it off the heat. And that's it. We're ready to plate our dish. I like to put down a layer of cheesy grits and then I place a couple of short ribs on top. Put down a few carrots and onions and then get ready to drizzle. seductively pour over a little bit of your braising liquid, add some parsley, put your onions down, and you're good to go. And, well, that's all there is to it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.